Okay, uh, gonna start out tonight with um, basically duties of a local archery marshal, and uh, we'll also go with uh, marshals in training and marshals, uh, just uh, marshals in general from there. Uh, first thing any local archery marshal needs to know first is uh, she, they need to be in good uh, contact with both their Baron and Baroness of the local area or the Seneschal and uh, be able to work with them because there's a lot of things that go into this. Um, next biggest thing is they need to be able to find a place where you can practice. Um, in there's all kinds of different places. Uh, some people use um, uh, backyards, uh, not in town, I would hope, because that's generally illegal in most towns. Uh, don't do that. Um, if you're one of these crazy people that has like 20 acres in their back 40, build their own little uh, shed to build stuff in uh, that their husband makes for them or something like that, then maybe you can do that kind of thing, but most of us can't. Um, local archery parks. Uh, we happen to have one in North Keep, uh, it's down in Kuwaita. It's about a 30 minute drive, but it's a, basically it's a 60 yard range with a uh, berm at the back. Um, just find some place. Uh, it doesn't need to be huge. If you can only shoot 20 yards, that's fine. You don't have to be doing Royal Rounds every single weekend. Uh, just find some place that's safe. That's the biggest thing is safety. Um, if 20 yards, 120 yards, it doesn't matter as long as it's, you know, you can keep an eye on it and make sure that people don't go behind targets, uh, make sure it's roped off or, or something like that. It's just gotta, you have to have barriers to keep other people out of the area while you're shooting. Um, once you have that, uh, you have to be able to let the people know uh, that's where your center shawl comes in handy because your center shawl will know what's going on um okay now you've got your place uh you need to set up practice times uh go through the set of shawl and the bear and the baroness and your barony or your shire or canton or wherever it is and then you can set up your practices when most people can be there um other thing if you're the local archery marshal always 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 have a deputy um if you are an archery marshal, you need to be training other people. Uh, matter of fact, I recommend that everybody that's on the line is trained as an archery marshal. It's just, it's just sensible because you're not gonna wanna be in that position forever. And if you've only got 10 people shooting, you're gonna need somebody to replace you in a year or two. Uh, it's best just to train them all so everybody knows what's going on, everybody knows all the rules, so that way you don't have somebody being stupid and doing something idiotic. Um, uh, one other really, really super big thing, no freaking alcohol. Um, if there's an archery practice and there's a drinking practice, guess which goes first? And it ain't drinking. Um, I've, I've known groups that were, yeah, sure, let's have a beer or something like that and go out and shoot archery. No, not until you're done shooting. Uh, after you're done shooting, you go out and do whatever you want. I don't care. But as long as you're actually doing archery or throwing weapons or anything like that, no drinking. Um, and speaking of throwing weapons, that's part. This is going to be part of it in a lot of groups, at least uh, the smaller groups. They don't have multiple uh, officers. I think it's just sensible for an archer or a marshal to also train with thrown weapons. That way, you can have both practices at once. And if you're tired of shooting and you just want to do something a little bit relaxing. Yeah, throwing a knife is kind of fun. Watching it sink in the wood just makes everybody kind of smile, especially when you can actually do it. Uh, okay, after that, now you've got your place to set up. You've got your uh, practices set up. You've got your people there. Make them all sign a waiver. They all need to sign a waiver, and after that, the waiver goes, in, goes into the center shawl, and she'll send it all into the waiver secretary. Um, you should do this weekly. Um, what else with that? Okay, next thing. If you're, if you're training all your people, you need to train them, first of all, how to inspect weapons. You need to be able to look at the bows, you need to be able to look at the arrows, crossbows. Uh, if you're going to do throwing weapons, not how to inspect those at all, or those as well. Um, combat archery, 
know how to inspect combat archery equipment. Um, all of these things are part of being a missile marshal. I'm not even going to say archery marshal anymore because we're all missile marshals. Um, you don't have to do all the things. You don't know how to do. You don't have to do all the things, but you should at least have a passing uh, observation of how to at least know the safety of every single thing that can shoot, fling, throw, or anything that goes on in an archery or a missile range. Um, all of them are fairly easily done uh, for a, for archery. All you need to do is inspect a bow. You inspect the limbs to make sure that they are not not warped. Um, you inspect to make sure that there's no cracks. You inspect that there's make sure that the this not delaminating if it's a laminate bow. Um, if it's a long bow, you make sure that there's no um, warpage in the in the limbs in any way. Uh, check your strings. Are the servings okay? Um, are, there, are there any um, are, is the string okay? Is the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is there a cut in the string anywhere? If it is, that's got to go. Uh, replace it with a new one. Um, or if you can, fix it. Uh, make sure the string is waxed, uh, so that way you're not uh, giving undue wear on it and the string's going to break on you. Uh, that's just the bows, crossbow. Make sure that the stock isn't cracked. Make sure that the prod isn't cracked. Uh, make sure that the string is waxed, that the servings are not uh, torn. Um, make sure if it's a new crossbow, it has a zicker. Uh, what a zicker is, is a piece of leather or uh, generally leather, or it might be a rubber tubing that goes along the prod. If the prod snaps, that keeps it from flying in different pieces and going all over the place and hitting people. This is a bad thing. Um, thrown weapons. Make sure that uh, there's no uh, nicks in the, that's going to cut a hand or anything like that when you're throwing. Uh, make sure that the handles on the axes aren't broken, cracked up, and, and going to be a safety hazard. Uh, set up your targets. Uh, knowing where your targets are going to go. Uh, making sure that they're not going to be a safety hazard. Uh, go fall on somebody. Uh, yeah, I've actually seen a, an archery target fall over on somebody. It was not a cool experience. Um, basic things like that. Uh, next, when you're running your range, make sure you know that, make sure that everybody knows the commands. Uh, archers to the line, then you're going to yell down range, is the range clear? And you make sure, you actually don't say, is the range clear? Yes, range is clear, now you too. No, it doesn't work that way. You need to actually look down range to make sure that there's not some idiot uh, training or doing Monty Python how to hide games down there. Um, I can tell you a story where we were down at Camp Takani. There is a small building, um, there was a small structure that sits about eight, ten feet off the ground that is uh, like a kid's playhouse or something like that. We had the range set up right next to it, it was within the shooting zone. We were yelling several times, clear the range, you know, is the range clear? And we were okay until the sixth end when all of a sudden I saw some movement up in the little house and I called hold and there was a 16 year old girl that was up there just taking a nap and vandalizing the inside of the building um she was a i believe she was ejected from sight i'm not sure i i yelled at her i yelled at people i was very not happy uh and i let the local center shawl deal with that it was not our that was not our circus after that point but always make sure that there is no movement, that there is nobody actually back there. Um, had people walk out behind a range, you know, yell, is the range clear? And they just walked out there afterwards in the middle of, there's arrows flying all over the place and these people are just walking behind there like a pair, like a pair of dumbasses effectively. Uh, you need to watch out for that. You need to have your eyes on a swivel when it comes to the range. Uh, as an archery marshal, you need to not only be watching the line, you need to be watching down range to make sure that stupid crap like that doesn't happen. You have to be watching the archers to make sure that somebody doesn't do a sky draw. What that is, is where they actually raise the bow above their head, draw straight down, and then lower it. Um, it's a really cool thing to do in the movies. It looks really pretty. However, when you actually draw the bow like that, you actually at least guess where that arrow's going. It's going straight up there. Where's it going to come back down? You don't know. Neither does anybody else. It's where the wind, wherever the wind blows it, and somebody's going to end up taking an arrow in the top of the head. It won't penetrate and actually kill them, but it will hurt like hell and you'll have to do a report and somebody's going to have to go away and it's never a good idea. 
okay, now you've got your, line, your range cleared. You've got your people on the line. You're watching the range. You're watching the line. You're watching your archers. And this is where you always want to have a second archery marshal. Um, having a second one, in my opinion, is a must. Uh, you got to have somebody that's watching your back as well as because you only got two eyes and they only face one direction at one time. Uh, you're going to want somebody to be able to have that second set of eyes to watch for the things that you can't see when you're actually paying attention to the archers. For that toddler that's going to come running up from behind, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy, and want to give them a big old hug where they got a crossbow that they're loading in their hand. Not a good situation. Um, okay. Now you've got your archers. Uh, they've got the, the range is cleared. They're at the line. Archers, you may prepare a fire, or this is a time drawn. You're going to give them their instructions at that point in time, what they're actually going to be doing. Uh, tell them, okay, range is clear. You may fire at will, or you may fire at Bob, or you may fire whatever the heck you're going to call that target. Who knows? Um, there's so many different kinds of targets, so many different kinds of shoots. You don't, I can't even really go into all that, but um, they're going to shoot and they're going to shoot and you're actually going to pay attention because some of them are going to shoot a lot faster than others. Uh, you're either going to have six or you're going to have 30 seconds or uh, whatever it is. But I guarantee one thing, when you think that they're all done, no, there's going to be some guy with a crossbow that's going to still be shooting and it's going to take him 20 seconds per arrow or per bolt. So um, you can, if it's one of those ones where you got a lot of people and you got uh, several targets down range, you can actually have people rotate in. Just have to be very careful and pay attention to the old guy with the crossbow that's still shooting three minutes later. Uh, and he's on his fourth bolt. Um, now, everybody's finally done. Next command, bows down. Okay, bows go down, you can say, okay, bows are down, line is clear. Now you may retrieve and score or just retrieve if you're doing a practice round, it doesn't really matter. Um, while everybody's down there, now we're, your head is on a swivel again because somebody has missed the target and they're going to be looking for their arrow or their bolt and it's going to be back behind a target somewhere. So they're going to be back there looking and looking and looking and everybody else has got all their stuff and they go back up to the line. And all of a sudden you look down there, it's like, oh, yeah, there's still, there's still somebody down there. That's why you have your head on a swivel because somebody's going to forget to clear the range a second time and all of a sudden you're going to have that, the, the bow come up, the crossbow come up and they're still... Joe Bob or Jeannie or whoever it is that lost four out of her six arrows is still down there looking for them. Um, everything in archery, everything, everything, everything is about safety. That's the one thing as a local archery marshal that you need to be more aware of than anything is safety. Um, well, all, all martial activities are, but um, anything with missile weapons is definitely a little bit more because uh, with a heavy weapons fighter. Uh, if they're swinging, you know exactly where they're at, you know exactly where they're gonna hit, you know exactly how long that weapon is. We got weapons that can reach out 150 yards. Um, that's just something to be aware of. Um, now, you run your practice uh, keeping score. What kind of scores are you gonna do? What kind of uh, range are you going to run uh, as far as targets? Um, are you doing uh, time grounds? Are you doing, um, uh, perhaps I'm going into this a bit more than I, than I need to. Right. What do you think, Kat? Okay. Um, now, how often are you going to have practice? Are you going to have practice weekly? Are you going to have practice monthly? These are things that you need to do. Uh, be aware of as well. Um, what are you going to do for weather? Uh, is it too hot? Is it too cold? Is it too rainy? Is it too windy? Um, you need to at least probably three or four days beforehand, you need to check the weather and see what's going on. Uh, is it going to be storming? I mean, if you look at your weather chart or at your weather forecast and it says, yes, 100% chance of rain over the next six days, um, you might want to cancel practice as early as you can. Um, if you don't know, you can always wait until uh, the day before and say, yeah, it looks like a pretty strong chance of uh, bad weather. We're going to cancel practice or it looks like it's going to be really windy. Let's go ahead and cancel practice. Um, this is also dependent. Are you at a 20 yard range or are you at a 60 yard range? If you're going to be shoot, shooting 40 yard targets, uh, a 10 mile an hour wind is a bad thing. If you're shooting at 10 to 20 yard targets, 
it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is where your own personal judgment is going to have to take place. Um, what else? Yeah, uh, heat and cold. Uh, do you have shade? If you have shade, heat really isn't as bad as all that. You know, it's warm, but you could still uh, get around and do your things. Uh, as far as cold, uh, be careful. Uh, prods and especially uh, aluminum prods and crossbows uh, and the fiberglass not so much but the aluminum prods and crossbows they get too cold they may react badly you don't know um, is that a combat archery prod that you've had on there for 10 years it's like all of a sudden it's oh yeah it's 35 degrees it's above freezing we're all good you go out there and you pull that thing back and it folds in half yeah should have done that maybe uh, that's another thing uh, how old is your equipment if your equipment is really really old uh, you have to maybe a little more tender loving care to it a little more pay a little more attention uh, because uh, those old prods uh, old bows and things like that are going to do unpredictable things especially if you haven't put it in a good area a good storage area or something like that uh, arrows always check your arrows for cracks always check your arrows to make sure the fletchings aren't coming off uh, always flex your arrows when you check them. Um, don't just twirl it in your hands like a pencil or something like that. Actually give just a little bit of flex. Uh, it doesn't need more than a couple of pounds. Uh, you don't actually have to crank that thing into a bow. Just put a little bit of pressure on it and turn it as you do because that way if it has separated and cracked at all, like you'll see it, it'll actually be a little bit, uh, it'll look funny. And you'll know that that is a bad arrow now. Um, Always watch your archers as they're shooting. Um, archers do funny things for funny reasons, uh, especially new people that just don't know. Uh, if you see something that they're doing that's unsafe, stop them immediately. Call hold. Uh, if they're doing something that is really causing them problems in their shooting and they're just not figuring it out, point out to them in a respectful way. It's like, hey, you might not want to stand with your left foot halfway up your butt while you're shooting. Just things like that. Um, that's obviously not going to happen, but you, you see what I mean. Um, and that's all there really is to that. Uh, other local archery martial things you need to do is whenever your, your group is having a tournament, you need to be there, um, to actually help them, uh, because your champion may not be an archery marshal. You don't know. Uh, they may come up with wild and crazy ideas for a shoot that are completely not workable. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these things are you need to know beforehand uh, with your tourney. Um, make sure that everything is set up for that, for that person that's running the tourney, uh, if they're going to run it. Uh, give them all the help that you need. Uh, I don't, yeah. Um, I really don't have anything else. Does anybody have any questions? This is probably pretty quick, wasn't it, Kat? You went 30 minutes, so that's, that's oh, not bad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is anyone, any, let's, it's question and answer time. <laughs> Anybody else still awake? Um, no, I was just going to say what you just said about uh, champions. I had that happen at an Eldrin event. Um, I was water bearing and I went over to take water to the archery range and they said, um, cat, the current champion is running the shoot, but he's not an archery marshal and there's no archery marshal here. And I was like, okay. So I stayed there and ran the range for him. That's good. Oh, yeah. um, as I've had two people point out to me, one, my wife, uh, reporting, reporting is something that's very, very important. Uh, as a local archery marshal, you have to do your reports. You have to send in uh, any time that you uh, run an event, send in a report for that event. If you're the local archery marshal, it's not up to the guy running the tournament to actually do the event, the, the, the report. It's yours. You, you are the person at the tourney. You write the report. Uh, you have quarterly reports you have to write. Uh, all of these things, if you have an entry, yeah, you got to write that report too. Uh, none of these things are fun, but believe it or not, they're actually not all that painful. It only takes about five to 10 minutes to write a report and then you're done for four months or three months. And then you only have to do one at the, after your event. That's it. It's not that hard of a job. 
Uh, if you're doing royal rounds, I've never been a local marshal. Does the local marshal turn those in? Uh, yeah, you'll actually send those in through um, uh, Caitlin. Yeah, the yeah, royal round it. secretary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll send them I to her. I just wasn't sure if people did it themselves or if the marshal did it, so that's good to know. Well, the marshal does it. Whoever's actually running the shoot, it could be the marshal. Um, if you happen to have access to the Royal Round score scoring, uh, if you know how to put it in, uh, might not even be you running the range, but if you know how to do it, or if you know whoever does, you give them the scores and they'll, they'll turn them in for you. Um, I suggest anybody with uh, that scenario tree marshal needs to talk to Caitlin to actually get uh, access to it, to um, uh, get a password and a, and a username to be able to put those in. Um, if you're the only one there, do not turn in your own scores. That's just, uh, it's kind of like, yes, I ran a tournament. I was the only one there, and I won, so I'm going to be the champion for next year. No. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Has anybody else got anything that I may have missed? I guess not. Okay, How often microphone. do you have to do uh, local reports? And yes. Local reports? Uh, okay. Um, that, I think, is dependent upon your local group. If your local group has a monthly meeting, then you'll have one at the officer's meeting um, or at the local populace meeting. Um, it just depends upon your local group. Yeah, but, like, the report to Kingdom, like he was saying, is only quarterly. So Yeah, it's quarterly. What are some main things to watch out for if a completely new archer comes out? to your practice, what are the things that you see most often that they might do um, that's dangerous? Okay, overdrawing. Overdrawing is, you know, especially if, okay, if you get some guy that's like six foot four and you hand him a bow for a five foot two woman, bad things are going to happen. I can almost guarantee he's either gonna break that bow or he's gonna, uh, the worst possible thing that could happen is he's going to overdraw, which means he's going to pull that thing back, and he's going to pull that arrow point back past his hand, and then he's going to release, and it's going to go through here. Um, I've not seen it happen, but I've seen pictures where it happened, and, oh, that was not something you want to have happen to you. So how would she know if it was the right size bow for the right size person? Um, well, you can pretty much take a look at it. If you get a, a six-foot guy, and he's got a bow with 24 inch arrows, obviously not right. Um, 28 inch arrows, probably not right. He should probably have 30 to 32 inch arrows. Um, what I would do is even before, I would actually have him draw the bow and actually look to see how long it is. And maybe actually just uh, without an arrow on it and actually make a, put, a, put one of his arrows up along there just to see how long that is up next to it. Um, just something as simple as that. I mean, it, it's not, it, it's just kind of just watching and paying attention is the biggest thing to safety. It's 90% of the times it isn't thing that you're looking for. It's something that's, that's in the back of your head. It's like, it's like, Oh crap. No, 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 no. Hold. Yeah. Another thing, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, but that I see a lot of new people do is, <clears throat> you know, they may not be real good at getting that arrow on the bow real good and then it'll fall. And if it falls on the other side of the line, their natural reaction is to bend down and pick it up. Don't let them do that. <laughs> That's not safe. They should not cross the line. If they want to get their arrow and you see them start to do that, call a hold, let them pick yeah. it up. Um, I've actually dropped an arrow. I mean, right, basically, I didn't even have to move forward. I just reached down and, and picked it up, but I didn't cross the line to do it. Um, I've seen people actually, it was like shoot, and the arrow goes like three feet, goes boop, um, and then they go to pick it up. It's like, nope, hold, don't do that. Yeah. Um, if it just drops right in front of them, you know, odds are they're, they're not going to actually, uh, mm -hmm. they may actually put a foot over the line, especially if they're having a hard time bending over, but mm -hmm. generally they're not going to do that. Um, if they do, then yeah, they're probably new and you should probably instruct them in the ways of what not to do. 
That's what I was going to say too. what you just mentioned, Johanna, usually when we have a new person show up, we go through kind of a little quick archery safety 101 thing and we tell them, okay, these are the calls that we're going to say, this is when you can shoot, this is when you can't, you know, we're going to ask you to put your bow down, don't carry it with you when you go to retrieve your arrows and we just kind of go through some rules real quick and tell them, you know, toe the line, don't straddle the line, all that kind of stuff. Okay, microphone's on everybody. Let's uh, have some questions and answers here. Well, I have one and it's, it's kind of just your opinion, but um, I've had people ask me about this before, so I know my opinion, but I wanted to see what yours was. If someone is an Arcarius and is on a path to try to become an Archeor, would you recommend that they be their group's local archery marshal and why or why not? Like what are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? Um, um, I personally think that as an Arcarius, you should do what works for you. Um, not everybody's gonna follow the same path. Uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, if your temperament isn't to be an archery mar or uh, not an archery marshal, but to be a local archery marshal, maybe your temperament is to be that guy that sits back and makes bows for everybody or makes the crossbows or makes arrows or doesn't really want to be in front of the crew, but um, it is all about service in other ways. It, it's dependent upon the person. It's completely what it is. I agree with that. And I've also told people if you if your main focus is target archery, you need to be practicing. So you need to be getting better. And so just know if you take that office, you're not going to get to practice at your practices. So you have to have another time and place that you can practice because you're teaching and you're in charge of safety. You can shoot some, but I mean, you're not going to get to shoot enough to keep your skills up. Mm, yeah, that's one part of it, unless you are clever enough to actually train other archery marshals. Um, if you're doing this, if you're training other archery marshals, then yeah, you're going to have time to practice. You're going to have time to shoot because guess what? You have now successfully just cloned yourself. Um, yeah, that's a good point. This is, this is what being an arc or an Arcarius should be all about, is you are trying to find people that can replace you if need be. You're not going to be here forever. None of us are. Um, passing it on to the next group, passing it on to everybody else is probably the most important thing about this. You can be the greatest shooter in the world, but guess what? In 10 years when you, you've moved on to do something else or you're doing rapier now, uh oh, maybe that's me, I don't know. Um, when you're doing rapier or something like that, uh, um, just know that the, the best legacy that you can actually give is um, teaching a bunch of people to replace you. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody else posted up about maintenance. Uh, equipment maintenance, uh, maintenance is very important. If you're the local archery marshal, you have all the local archery equipment. It's up to you to make sure that that equipment is maintained, uh, is stored properly so it doesn't degrade. Uh, you need targets. Um, make sure those targets are in good condition. Um, do not leave grass targets in a leaky shed. Guess what? You're going to have multi targets. Bad thing. Um, especially since those grass targets tend to be pretty damn expensive. Um, foam targets. Foam targets are really nice. Leaving them out in hot sheds is bad. They tend not to retain their foamness for very long if you do that. And then once again, you've destroyed perfectly good expensive targets. Um, bows. Do not leave your strung bow lying in the sun. Um, if you see somebody that has done that, move their bow for them if they're not around. If they are around, tell them hey, did you know that if you leave a strung bow in the sun, it's uh, 98 degrees outside that in about an hour and a half, you're not going to have a bow anymore. Uh, things like that. Um, arrow maintenance. Don't leave dirt and crud on your arrows after your archery practice. Clean them off. Uh, things like that. It's, uh, maintenance is a, pretty much a common sense thing. Anything else? And I know Namron will hold... Uh 
like arrow making days so that we if we start to get low on loaner arrows we can all get together and make some more and then that serves two purposes because not only are you making some for the barony but you're also teaching newer archers if they don't know how to make their own arrows so and that actually is probably a failing on my part because i suck at making arrows and bolts i can make crossbows for days arrows not so much uh, I can do it. I do. It is probably the most tedious and hateful task that I own, that I do. Um, I would rather embroider than do that. Of Ooh, course, really? I like embroidery. I actually I... enjoy embroidery, so there we are. Um, <laughs> I, I hate making bolts. I, I despise making bolts. I like it, but, you know, everybody's different. Yep. Um, anything more, Katya? Or Isaac, do you have questions as a newer archery marshal um what are the current feeding of knives and spears and axes i don't know anything about those um knives axes and spears keep dirt off them keep rust off of them keep nicks out of the out of the blades uh or off the handles uh, make sure your handles aren't cracked that's pretty much all there is i mean really I, I, it's the same as you do for your hammer in your shed although yeah. you probably haven't got as much money in your hammer <laughs> Captain just uh, went through with me and got me uh, thrown weapons marshal status because being kingdom missile, I needed that. And that was not something that I had. I've thrown before, but I've never run a range. And so he was showing me um, to Carl's point, like if you inspect the uh, knives or axes and they have burrs on them, you know, to take uh, some sandpaper and get those burrs off or if it's metal and it has a burr, you know, you have, uh, what's it called? A file. Thank you, that. And <laughs> you get the <laughs> burrs off with that. So that was one of the big things that he showed me. And then if you're inspecting those uh, because you're running a thrown weapons range and there's duct tape on their spear, you or, need to ask them or why. Their axe. <laughs> or their axe, you need to ask them why. Because if it's just there to give them more grip, that's fine. But if it's there because their handle is broken and they're holding it together with duct tape, that's not okay. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, Isaac, are you actually there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Now okay. you see why he's muted. He's got little uh, ones. <laughs> I understand now. Okay, never mind. Go about your business, Isaac. Um, does anybody else have anything at all? I guess not. I'm good. Thank you so much for teaching. Really appreciate okay. it. And, Thank you all uh, for coming. I hope everybody had a not snoozy time. I think it was great. And uh, okay. I'll get the uh, video posted tomorrow for people that weren't able to attend. Okay, thank you very much, Kat. You're welcome. Okay, Carl, everybody. It's good have... to see your face. Well, it's good to see yours too, although it's just a picture. I know, I'm not exactly presentable. It's my summer kind of, no. Anyway, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you, Carl. Have a good night, and we'll talk Go to everybody later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.